We give God all the praises and the adorations for bringing us together on the Lord's Day like this. You know, there are only two days, the Lord's Day and the rest, right? And so, in the life of a Christian, this day is very special. I wish all born on the Lord's Day good luck and all the best in life. And the race. All right, brethren, for the last time I check, today or this week, according to the school's calendar, is a revision week. True of us. True. Thank you. And so we are having a revision week this week as we prepare for exams. And as a matter of fact, I want us to, as a church, revise on what we've been taught for the entire semester. And that is what we are here for this very morning. And so if my memory sets me right, there was a sermon by our brother Albert Chala, Taking it from Second Corinthians chapter five, verse eight through ten. Please remember the same one taste. Sorry, the topic. Until then, oh goodbye. So emotional topic by our brother. And I believe he studied so much from it. And it's still breaking in our ears. That until then, all goodbye. Our brother did so well, letting us know that there are some of us he doesn't want to say goodbye to because we might meet again. But there are some people whom he has to say goodbye to because we might not meet again. Fast forward, our brother Kofi Martin led us in first. Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17 through 18. And the simple topic our brother can deduce for his sermon was that, please, who recalls that? Heaven, thank you. And so we have a sermon from two brethren, until then, or goodbye, and one says heaven. And this is the revision we are about to do this morning. Shall we have a word of prayer? We thank you so much, our Heavenly Father. We give you all the glory and all the praises. We thank you for the opportunity to be admonished by you this morning. Help us to hear your voice and speak to us this morning. Through Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Brethren, in Acts chapter 20 that we read from verse 36 through 38, Something happened over there, and this is not our first time reading this. That is something we are doing revision today. Paul was about to depart to Jerusalem, where he was going to face persecution, probably not to be seen again. He was going to die. And as he journeyed on his last missionary journey, he came to Miletus, reading from verse 17. And he sent for the elders at Ephesus. And Paul, after preaching to them or telling them, admonishing them what is ahead of them, and so he will get to 28 and say they should take heed. And now admonish them to the point of recalling, recalling what Christ has told them when it comes to giving. And he will conclude by telling them or as I take the reading and when he had said these things he knelt down and prayed with them all then they all wept freely they cried and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him soaring most of all 
for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more. And they accompanied him to the ship. And so the words that Paul spoke to them, that they will see his face no more, made them wait. They became so sad to hear that Paul's face will not be seen by them again. Wherein, in fact, I think the church at Ephesus, Paul loves it so much because we see him being the one to bring it into existence, the orb, starting the church over there. And he speaks to the elders of that church in person. And he has to write a letter to the church again, the book of Ephesians. And he has two good letters to the preacher of that church. First and second Timothy. And so I think Paul loves the church so much. So seeing Paul living to the extent that his face will not be seen anymore. It brings so sad. Or it makes them so sad. And probably we are not an exemption from this. In the year 1771, most of us were not born by then. All of us. <laughs> All right, so there was a man called John Fawcett. And this man, he suffered a lot in uh, his life because he has to feed for himself right from tender age. And so he did so until one day he heard a sermon when he was about 12 years from a Baptist preacher. And then that sermon touched him a lot and he said to himself, you also be a preacher. But unfortunately in the Baptist church. And he started getting invitation to a Baptist church in a place called Wensgate. It's actually a village. As at 8 or 18 December in 1763. And so this man was having the invitation to worship with them and was officially invited to be their preacher at the village. And that was one year after in May 1761. After he has moved there with a wife, life becomes so difficult because it was a village and he was not supported well. But he did so well. He sacrificed all, his, all that he had for the benefit of that congregation over there at the village. And so history tells us that uh, the church begins to expand their territories. And then they had a lot of people. And then there was a lot of improvement over there because of how he was. Looking at how influential he was, he had an appointment to come to London, a big city, at Carter Lane, to preach for the Baptist church over there upon the death of the former preacher, John Gill. So in 1771, that was when the appointment came. And so, like, you and I would do the same. You have you are at a village and you've gotten the appointment to come to the city where everything will be provided for you. In fact, the village was really suffering. In his preparation to leave, they have to sell some of the church equipment to, make, uh, to use as TNT for him because they were financially bad or broken. So the day came for his departure and everything was set for him to leave. His family, everything is ready. The horses are ready to move him. And when he was about to say bye for them to leave, the people saw so much that he couldn't leave. It was so emotional that John Fawcett has to stay back for the next 45 years of his life. He didn't leave the place, to the city. So he stayed at the village till he died. And brethren, history tells us that that brings the inspiration for him to write the hymn, 
blessed be the tie that binds us. And in that hymn, because of time, we will not go through the stanzas. But I want you to take note of the stanza four. In fact, the hymns are actually six stanzas, but they've reduced it to four. And in the verse four, this is what he says. When we are sander apart, it gives us what? An inward pain. But we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. And hope to meet again. In fact, when we are sander apart, it gives us a lot of pains. Seeing progress no more. Oh. <laughs> it gives us a lot of pains. But do you remember the last phrase or sentence of the stanza? And we hope to meet again. Beloved, I want to reason with you on the sermon topic. We hope to meet again. We hope to meet again. Beloved, we hope to meet again. Tell the brother sitting by you or the sister, we hope to meet again. We hope to meet again. Of course, we hope to meet again, but beloved, where would that place be? Where do we hope to meet again? Will it be that we hope to meet again on off campus? Probably not. But where do we hope to meet again? Beloved, this morning, we hope to meet again in heaven. And so knowing all the trials, all the sufferings on this earth, and knowing for sure that we can't be in person till the end of the age, we will surely part ways. We will surely go one way or the other. However, as we part ways on this life, as we leave campus to other world, we should have in our mind that we hope to meet again in heaven. So we hope to meet again not in, on this physical world or not on this earth, but we hope to meet again in heaven. Beloved, have you ever thought how heaven would be like? Probably not. You've not. You've not thought about how heaven would be like. If you really know how heaven will be like, then we hope to indeed meet again in heaven. Beloved, for the fellowship that we have here on campus alone, tells us that we have to meet again. Not the food aspect, no. I know as long as our brother Eben is concerned, the food matters. But when we come together to sing, but when we come together to have a fellowship like this. Songs Marathon tells us a lot. In fact, when we are doing it, we wish not to close. When we are doing nights of hymns and songs and spiritual, uh, nights of hymns, psalms and spiritual songs, we wish not to close because we really enjoy that fellowship. And having these fellowships, we ought to meet again, beloved. And not at any other place, but in heaven. Do you know how heaven will be like? That is where we ought or we want to meet again. Beloved, we want to meet in heaven. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 23, it tells us that there will be no sun or moon in heaven. Wow. Then the place will be total darkness, right? But no, it tells us that the glory of God gives us light over there. And that is where we want to meet again. Where the glory of God serves as light. Beloved, we want or we hope to meet again in heaven. Revelation 21, reading from 25, tells us that there will be no darkness or there will be no night. It's going to be light throughout. That is where we ought to meet again. In fact, we have a good fellowship on campus here. And there are times they give light out whilst worshiping. Every place becomes dark. 
But we want to meet at where there will be no light. Oh, sorry, there will be no darkness. That is where we hope to meet. So that we will sink and give glory to our Father in heaven. Beloved, we hope to meet again where there are many mansions. In fact, over here, you should probably share in a room, four in a room or whatever, but we hope to meet at a place where there are many mansions. In John chapter 14, verse 1 through 4, Christ will promise his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. For if it was not so, I will not tell you that in my father's house there are many mountains. And if I go and prepare the place for you, I'll come back for you. We hope to meet at where there are many mountains for you and I. That is where we hope to meet again, beloved. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, Paul tells us that no eye has in or no ear has ever heard the beauty of of the place we hope to meet again, beloved. The beauty cannot be compared to Dubai. No, not even America. And so we don't hope to meet in Dubai. By the way, I have a Dubai partner here, Benedicta. But that is not where we hope to meet in the future. We hope to meet again in heaven. The Bible tells us that this place is a city of good. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 21 going, we read that this city is a city of gold. And that is the place you and I want to be. Beloved, we hope to meet again in the city of gold. We hope to meet again not in Dubai, as I said. A lot of us are yearning towards those places, America and co, but is there a place over there built with gold? No. There is none. There is no city or no road made of gold over there, but we yearn to be at these places. How about the place where there is gold for us to walk upon? We hope to meet again. Beloved, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 and 2, that there is a pure river of water of life, like what? A crystal. You are not going to drink any galamse water over there. You are going to have a pure water. That is where we want to meet again. Beloved, we hope to meet again, not on this physical world, but in heaven. In fact, the hymn will tell us that by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. And that is the place we hope to meet again. To our final years, as you are leaving campus, we hope to meet again. We know you are leaving campus for good. We might never cross paths again in our life, and that is the sad truth. However, our hope is to meet again in heaven. As you aspire for better jobs out there, we hope to meet again in heaven. As you seek for greener pastures, we hope to meet again in heaven. Beloved, remember that in your applications for schools, scholarships, and jobs, we hope to meet again in the future. So will you apply to a place where your spirituality will be at stake, remember, we hope to meet again in the future. 
in your decisions to apply for schools, remember the choice you make. Remember the place you are going that we hope to meet again in the future. And so the choice you make will not affect we meeting again in the future. We do not follow greener pastures to hinder we meeting again in the future, lovers. At the workplace you are going to find yourself in very soon, whatever you do over there, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. Whatever you do out there, when the reality sets in, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. You'll be out there not getting work, being stranded. You take in any means to get work to do, to survive. In those process, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. And so, as you are giving bribes to get better jobs, as you are involving in corruptions to secure a better position or well-to-do jobs, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. As you exchange something very dear to you for positions, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. In our relationships, dating, in courtship, beloved, let us know that we hope to meet again in the future. We go to the stream of doing things that are not allowed for people who are not legally married to do. As you are doing those things, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. As you think of loving someone to the stain of giving your virginity to that person, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. For God so loved the world, he did not give us his virginity, but his only begotten son. And so if you claim you love someone by giving him or her your virginity, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. As you go out there, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 and 25, that our brother read for us. By faith, when Moses grew up, no, he didn't prefer to be called a uh, the son of Pharaoh's daughter, no, but rather to suffer afflictions with the people of God. Moses is not chased material things. No. That is not what Moses did. Moses was in the king's palace. Do you know what goes in over there? Where someone will feed you daily. Someone will bring you your breakfast, your lunch, and your supper. Probably someone will bath you. Moses did not choose that. But he rather wanted to suffer affliction. And so as you go out there in your decisions and everything that you'll be doing over there, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. And the scripture makes it so interesting in the verse 25 that Moses chose to suffer afflictions rather than to enjoy in this fleeting pleasures of this world. These pleasures that are passing away. These things that will not last. And so as we make applications to jobs in the detriment of our spiritual life, let's remember Moses and hope to meet again in the future. Beloved, we hope to meet again in the future. And so anything that will be an obstacle for you and I not to meet again in the future, 
must be done away with. We hope to meet again in the future for a better fellowship than what we are having now. And in heaven, not on this eight. To those who will still be on campus, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. As you decide not to go for devotions, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. As you decide not to go for dumb broadcasting, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. As you engage yourself in examination or practices, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. As you continue in fornication and betting, remember that we hope to meet again in the future. Beloved, in everything that we do, we should remember that we hope to meet again in the future. We hope to meet again in the future. I, I told you earlier on that we are doing revision, right? So wherever you are hearing and seeing, you've seen them already, right? We hope to meet at this place, not even the exact place though, and not here again. We hope to meet again in the future over here. Beloved, let me conclude with a plea to each and everyone here that as you are parting ways, Please let it not end here. Especially those on campus. Kindly check up on those living. Ask them how their spiritual life is going about. Ask them if they are continuing with Bible studies. Or because they are outside there, they've dropped it. Let's care about them as Andrews let us know that we are each other's keeper. Let's continue to check on one another, beloved. If you really hope to meet again in the future, we have to check up on one another and find out if they are still on track. If they are not, then we help them out. Let's check up on one another. To our brothers and sisters who are not baptized, you are first of all not part of this fellowship. And that is the sad truth. But then we hope to meet again in the future. Will you be part when you are meeting again? And preacher has said a lot about that today. And so for us to be able to be part of those who be able to meet again in the future, let's give ourselves up for baptism. Until we meet again, let us hold on to faith, hope, and love. Let's stay connected and support one another in our individual journeys. We hope to meet again. Will I see you, Bis Makauni? Will I see you, Abigail? We hope to meet again in the future. And when we do, we will celebrate our reunion in heaven. May God bless us all. Keep us in the faith. Strengthen us. Guide our path as we hope to meet again in the future. And be steadfast in his weight. <laughs>